To the former head prosecutor taking on Centrelink over its controversial robo debt scheme, which has affected almost 200,000 people, some in financial turmoil. It's really hard. I, I just want to know what I did wrong. I don't believe that I set out to intentionally defraud anyone. I think it's illegal and I think it's scandalous. In any other situation, you'd call it theft. The robo-debt system was sent by Centrelink to seek out debts and destroy them. Instead, it's put innocent people in the firing line. They made me feel like a criminal. And now, it's judgement day. If a court says that this methodology is crook, um, which it is, and says it will not sustain a debt, then the vast majority of these 200,000 people who are receiving these bills, these debts, will be told that they, um, they're not enforceable and uh, they can tell Centrelink to get lost. Bethany Ellis is a teacher, a wife, and soon she'll be a mum. One thing she says she's not is a welfare cheat. I sort of feel like I'm a fundamentally honest person. I didn't believe I'd deliberately done anything wrong, but suddenly I've got people saying I've done the wrong thing and I've got a debt that I have to pay. Five months ago, this 32-year-old received a letter in the mail from Centrelink saying she was being assessed for the years 2012 and 2013. So I had to go to the bank to get the statement. That account had been closed, so they printed out 70 pages worth of my whole year in financial report. Um, so that came out. I had to then go through and highlight all the payments, got that done, plugged it into the system, and a pop-up box basically came up saying that I owed them about $1,400. And I went, I'm sorry, what now? <laughs> Every time she's called the government agency, they give her a different figure. It's been really confusing. There's been no justification except that that's what the system is telling them. You owe us this money and they can't seem to justify or explain it. I think they're bullying very vulnerable people. That's what they're doing. Enter QC Gavin Silbert, a man who spent most of his life fighting for justice, serving until recently as Victoria's chief Crown Prosecutor. Now he's begun a new battle for the people of Australia. I think they're in breach of their legislation. Um, the whole system is, is a crazy situation. He's taking on Centrelink over their controversial robo-debt scheme, which aims to claw back up to $4.5 billion in welfare overpayments. Let's make it quite clear, if someone is defrauding Centrelink or defrauding the Commonwealth or getting money they're not entitled to, they should be pursued and forced to give it back. There's no question about that. But this 200,000 odd people who are being pursued are not in that category, uh, as far as I can tell. The onus is placed on me, guilty until proven innocent, to try and show them where they've made a mistake. Gary White has his hands full, working as a machine operator and raising two kids as a single parent. Now he's had to take on the burden of fighting the Department of Human Services too, over an alleged debt of $12,000. I can't afford this. The, the money that they're asking for is a couple of years worth of the, worth of the children's school fees. You know, it's, I don't have that spare and, and to, be, to be basically labelled a thief saying that I've on purposely done it, um, when you say it to them they deny that that's the point but that's the way you're made to feel and I've done nothing wrong. So how does robo-debt determine what people owe? Well, the program looks at someone's income over the whole year and averages it over fortnightly periods rather than discovering their actual income for each and every pay period. It's argued that most debts calculated this way are greatly inflated and some are even false. I think the robo-debt scheme really throws out the window how you're supposed to calculate debts which is supposed to be on evidence, not based on formulas. The onus is on the punter to prove their innocence, as Centrelink has destroyed many of their records, according to solicitor Jeremy King. He's teaming up with barrister Gavin Silbert. Both are working pro bono, hoping to take a client's case to the federal court. If they win, it could change everything. I hope this would set a precedent to show that the way that this robo-debt scheme has been uh, rolled out is not in accordance with the law uh, and that so therefore all of the other debts that have been sent out to people are not in accordance with the law and that the government would wipe those debts. Using a computer program to make up bills that are so often false and then making it up to the people to prove they're wrong 
It's just wrong and Centrelink needs to stop it. We first brought you Michael Griffin's plight last year. The 36-year-old was told he owed $3,000. But after our story ran, Centrelink reviewed his case and brought the amount down to just $50. If it was the private sector, people would be in jail. The ACCC would be going crazy. But because it's the government, here we are. Beyond frustrating. It's, it's been a nightmare. I work full time and having to spend hours on the phone Centrelink and on hold. It is the worst. When you're on hold, they play one song. It's a panpipe version of Toto's Africa, and they play it on repeat. It literally drives you mad. In a statement, Centrelink told us the Commonwealth Ombudsman has reviewed the system and confirmed it is entirely reasonable and appropriate for the department to ask customers to explain data matching discrepancies. And the system used is comprehensive and accurately captures the legislative and policy requirements. If debts are owed to the public purse, they should be paid and should be pursued. These are not such debts. It needs to be fixed and it needs to be fixed now. I mean, if I've made a mistake, I'm happy to pay it. I'm not, um, I'm not dishonest, but I just want to know where the problems come from and I want it sort of explained in a way that makes sense to me, which I don't feel like has happened yet. Well, Centrelink also told us that people can request a review of a debt decision at any time. I wonder how long you have to listen to the panpipes for. You can read the full statement on our website.